thanks a lot rana and mohit for uh, giving us a time for this uh, interview uh, last day was obviously very different we spoke about it even before this uh, call but uh, your agency managed to dominate our new business league what was the approach or took in a very very different year so if i may take that I, thanks for having us over and you know it's actually yes it's absolutely true that you know it's been quite a fantastic year for us last year uh, in spite of so many challenges in the market and environment and all but i think you know it uh, just to make it a quite a simple uh, and a straightforward answer i think you know when i came on board which was around 2 years and a few months before around end of 2018 i think havas media as a group and as you know as uh, havas media in particular was working at a certain pace you know there was a certain momentum but it wasn't so aggressive it wasn't like really trying to win businesses a clear line of growth and you know an ambition that made it very very stark across if you compare it to the other agencies and all we were actually not being invited for most of the pitches when i came in and did my reviews so we were winning businesses we were winning quite a great set of clients and i remember a lot of reviews when i had done great set of clients but we were not being part of the large scale pitches so because i what i gathered from all my audit and conversations with both consultants and clients and a lot of my earlier colleagues because i came from another network and i realized that while there was a decent reputation and all there was no strong credibility or stature so starting from that premise addressing the issues and like we keep saying that you know you catch the bull by the horn we said let's go for an overall approach of course there was a lot of leadership change lot of teams change and we decided who's the team that is going to take over mohit started working closely with me and from 2019 we started the entire process of growth and growth comes uh, you know like we all understand comes is if you win new business you win new clients and that started the entire process of a complete overhaul where we created a new leadership team under mohit we had a, a fantastic committee we created for new business we started looking at a task force we started looking at the product so i think the biggest focus we did in 19 was sharpen your product make it better start promoting our strengths which was you know meaningful brands you know you've seen the research studies and all which is something which is a group uh, you know overall a large scale study then we started focusing on the mx philosophy mohit will be talking about it later in this uh, conversation that something which is extremely indigenous extremely different from other groups conversations we looked at our expertise we looked at the talent we looked at our people we started focusing on di- digital e-commerce performance capabilities and we really built up the integrated village conversation massively built up there were group companies there was expertise across the group what resulted was that you know while mohit will elaborate on a lot of the business wins which is where the exciting bit happened last year and i think one of the biggest appreciation and conversations which happened for uh, havas media india group was that we are now part of the global team which uh, you are aware of we are part of the what we call as the group you know the top group g8 g9 committee which is part of the global committee where india is now a key stakeholder because of all the conversations and the wins and the growth that's happened i would i i think mohit will be able to really push it up more with all the wins Right. Thanks, Rana. Uh, so, as uh, Rana very uh, clearly and categorically said, uh, the last year has been really good, and you you also know, given that we have performed on the New Business League, uh, we won uh, businesses worth thousand plus crores. So, you know, that's the extent to which uh, we have been successful in twenty twenty, which otherwise was a very very tough year, as we all know. Right. And these included very large spenders like Domino's. Now, Rana did mention the fact that. we were not being called for large pitches but uh, dominos was one of the largest pitches that happened in 2020 and we were called for it and finally managed winning that business against very stiff competition and uh, one more uh, i would say surprise that i'm going to be giving you right now which is not out in the market is 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 the re- very recent win of ola so the entire ola business has been consolidated with us uh, it's not yet in the market no pr is happening because of the kind of environment that we are in Right. so will happen over a period of time but uh, this uh, ola is the ola mobility as well as the ola electric and i'm sure you know bhavesh's plans for ola electric how aggressive they are and it's a global win for us it's not just in india but across about 15 other countries in the in the world and it's also very important and in line with our sustainability kpis that we have at a global level 
given in, it's an electric uh, scooter uh, uh, mobility that we are talking about. And it's a right. very, very aggressive plan that they have. Besides this, we have won a lot of integrated uh, wins about uh, which Rana just spoke about, you know, the fact that we have a village now. We, we do go and, and, and uh, pitch integrated. And we did win clients like Micromax, Fortis, Harman Kardon, Fly Big as a part of the integrated uh, business wins where we are managing their creative, digital, media, everything put together. Right. There were very specific digital performance-led uh, pitches like YY Noodles, British Council that we won because uh, today you also have very, very specific digital uh, pitches and that's what we've been uh, uh, really uh, very successful at. Right. A lot of local client wins were there like ACC, Dr. Reddy's, Vikram Solar, Dr. Lal Path Labs, right. uh, Salarpura Satwa, which is one of the real estate builders in South and very recently, again, not yet out in the market, Hamdard. So, you know, uh, their foods division, which is the Ruha right. uh, uh, In the South, uh, we also uh, did win a lot of new age clients, not just in South, actually across India, because we are very strong in the new age domain and we made wins like Smule, Walmart, uh, Norton, GameZ, MyGate, Seedworks. And as a result of all this, you guys, uh, uh, you know, uh, gave us a number one position. And so does Rekma. Rekma has rated as a, uh, us as A plus in their comp uh, uh, scores and yeah. has given us a very good profile, which, you know, we are in the top four as far as the profiling goes. So it's all a result of uh, uh, what Rana mentioned, the entire change of approach uh, yeah. and, and a very, very aggressive new business strategy which is led from the top right you mentioned about some digital wins some integrated uh, wins as well what would be the percentage of the account wins that you are getting now are you are we looking at uh, you know clients looking at more of an integrated model of working now or are they still looking for you know specific digital or media agencies i would say the integrated uh, wins are about 10 to 12 percent right now but that okay. number is increasing very fast one year back, it was not even 5%. So from 5 it has moved to about 12%. This right. year, we see many more happening. So in my view, the integrated business uh, pitches will start increasing because clients also want to consolidate now and want right. one uh, window for all their uh, uh, needs. So we are seeing more of that now. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, moving from the new business wins to an approach that uh, you all uh, followed last year, one was opening up of offices when government rules allowed you all to. A lot of the other agencies did not do that. What is the thinking behind this? So, yeah, so, you know, uh, I've been asked this question many times. Why would yeah. we do it? So I think, you know, what happened, it was a very simple approach from the global team where what they asked us, uh, in fact, it was encouraged and not as a compulsion, but yeah. more as a keeping the avenue open that, you know, if we were the first ones to work from home because the moment it happened around mid of March, I think we were one of the first agencies globally and in India to decide to work from home. Similarly, when the when the embargo was lifted, I think we were again one of the groups which said, let's keep it open. Now, two, two or three reasons why we did this. So when they were, we were given a flexible option to keep it shut or we went out to all our employees and we asked a very simple question about if we open our offices, would you like to come back? Would you like to be free? Will you feel safe? Of course, safety was number one. So naturally, we ensured that every form of safety was protocol was taken when we were planning to open it. And second, we were very clear that if this opening of office is going to allow people to, you know, open up this space, the loneliness battle that people were facing, because we realized a lot of our employees are, you know, of a certain age, which was, you know, below, you know, age, a lot of them were single, a lot of them were actually staying far away from their homes. So we saw space as being a very genuine constraint, smaller flats, smaller houses, joint families, children, schools opening, because this was the month of June we are talking about when we started opening. Second, we looked at loneliness and fatigue for a lot of people. So people started saying that, you know, if the office is kept open, we may drop in, we may come. Third, we also said that keep your entire health parameter nothing, and only people who have their own vehicles or, you know, not for people with this. So it was kept open, keeping in mind, and I be believe me when I say this with conviction that I think it was one of the best decisions as a group we took. Why? Because people came, people walked in, people walked out with keeping all the embargoes of being absolutely, you know, ensuring health and everything. They right. used to come, spend few hours, meet some of their friends. You would talk, you would interact, you would laugh, you would chat. 
uh, you would know that I could go to an office where the Wi-Fi will work. I knew that I have my space. I know that I could use a conference room. Right. There was never a rigidity that you have to check in or check out. You could just walk in, walk out. Just let the right. HR team know that you are going to be visiting office. Follow the protocols of everything. And right. so I thought, I thought that you know, keeping that as a pretext, I thought it was a wonderful uh, collective gesture from my entire senior management to say that let's keep it open, right. not not for people to attend office, but just as a another leave, living and breathing space. So, you know, that was, I think, the thinking behind the whole exercise. And we just shut it down right now because of this entire crazy uh, numbers that is coming up. But even for the few weeks before, it was still open. The presence has always been very little, you know. So we we knew that, you know, if the if you were going to open an office, well, you know that the costs will be there, the electricity will be there and all. But I thought that was far lesser in terms of an expense to the emotional and mental space that you could give to people who were really battling multiple right. things multiple things and keeping that in mind if you know if that has worked for this group and for a lot of our people because like i said it was never a rigidity that you had to walk into office right. it was for you to take the call keeping in all the health and whatever i think we've got a, mu a much you know favorable feedback from the people for keeping it open right. that was the only reason behind it was it also easier then to, you know, you, you made a lot of new hires also uh, last year. I'm going to get, get into that in a bit. Sure. But, uh, a lot of people were saying, you know, when it came down to making new hires, people were being interviewed online, etc. Were the new hires uh, kept in mind when you kept the office open? So, you know, they could be, uh, the transition could happen pretty smoothly then, you know, when a new person was joining in? Honestly, no, not at all. No, no, not at all. Just not because I'm telling you again, because the only reason when we did this entire uh, kind of a dipstick across the entire 700, 800 odd people office, let's say around 50, 60% would have replied as a, in a very honest way that th their entire flexibility was that, uh, you know, nobody would like, to, you know, you wouldn't personally like to come out and say the challenges that you face at home because you were working from home, your parents' home, your own home, or you were lonely. But the moment you knew that you could step out, you could go somewhere, you could sit and chat you know with some people like if i could travel i would have probably gone to office and sat with mohit every day but i could see mohit with his entire entire senior leadership in delhi i would i would go to bombay office and bobby and i would be sitting chatting yeah. my office heads would be here you know you felt normal you felt okay uh, yeah. but but not you know not with, not for the hiring critics no not for that no, but did it help is what I'm saying, because a lot of people said, you know, it was a little um, uncomfortable for new hires. We, I faced it as well. You know, we had new hires in our team as well. Not the best of time because you're not really being able to coordinate with them every day. But uh, did it help is what I'm trying to say. You, you can say marginally. You can say oh, definitely yes. marginally. For example, we did hire certain very key hires like Neeraj who was hired as the chief strategy officer of the group. And he joined in April when we were in a total lockdown. And in fact, uh, when the office opened up a bit, you know, you're right, because in April, May, he was in a total lockdown and he was settling in a completely virtual world. And in right. the month of June, he started meeting a lot of the people in the Gurga office. He would come, right. he met Mohit, he met Manas, he met uh, Ravinder, started interacting. You're right. I think now when I look back, uh, uh, when you're asking me this question, right. I would assume that for a lot of people, at least in a certain sensitive or a senior profile, uh, it would yeah. have helped it would have helped to interact with people versus a completely no interaction. I, right. I, I know what you mean. So, yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, so, and coming again back to the uh, new talent bit, how many hires did you make last year? What? So close to about 50 plus hires we did across all uh, domains and functions, you know, in spite of a very difficult year. And right. the, the reason for that was because uh, uh, in 2020, we actually rolled out MX, which is uh, our new global operating system. And uh, MX actually stands for media experiences. Mm -hmm. And it actually capitalizes upon the meaningful media, which is uh, uh, our, our core to build meaningful brands. As you know, meaningful brands is our philosophy across. Yeah. So as a part of this, we actually uh, did a lot of reorganization of, of uh, our resources. We recrafted mm -hmm. the organization just to ensure that we are ahead of the times because that was very, very important. We needed to be ahead of the times. We needed to be a very, very uh, disciplined agency. And a lot of new roles actually came up uh, as a result of this restructuring reorganization. Okay. And we did hire a lot of senior members uh, in 2020. So just okay. to uh, name a few, uh, Sanchita Roy, we hired as the head of West, 
right yep. and very recently you would have read that he's she's moved she's elevated yeah. yeah head of strategy because you know the uh, the the focus on product is very very imperative yeah. we enhanced our digital team significantly in south and north and west we added data resources uh, uh, across uh, markets we actually added insights uh, uh, team in 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 our market because this mx uh, structuring actually <laughs> needs all these vertical uh, heads and that's the reason why we had to hire and in the hindsight for all good reasons to bolster our 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 uh, i would say the overall uh, the human resources uh, capability in the uh, in the industry we also enhanced the roles of a lot of our existing senior people for example uday uday mohan and venkat they all both became presidents one in the client facing domain and the other in the in the investment right. domain and you'll be hearing a lot of uh, more promotions happening uh, uh, very soon in in the in the media and right. uh, in our view actually the biggest asset that we have is hr you know the, the human resources are our biggest asset so we yes. need to ensure that we keep them motivated as rana said the very fact that we opened our office one very big reason was to tell them that you can go you have a space for yourself that you are were missing for such a long time so that it motivates you there were a few people who used to say no we'll come to office because we can't work from home and they used to enjoy sitting in that their space in office and 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 work the way they want to work so i think uh, uh, people has been very very uh, critical for us and even in a very tough year we made a lot of uh, new hires and strengthened our team in line with the mx re- reorganization that we did Right. So this was fifteen new joinees for media specifically, was it? Yeah, just media. He's talking about yeah, yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's fifty for uh, media across the organization. How many would there be? No, no, that that will be quite a big number. Yeah, quite okay. a big number. I'll have to just read look at it properly. But since okay. this was media, but quite a big number because I think most of our group companies, except Showbiz, uh, which was the event experiential marketing arm, which naturally right. had a freeze. and the rest of them of course we were cautious about the hiring but i would say that uh, because the business grew for most of us last year right. media creative uh, even our uh, you know all the acquired agencies health and all so there were right. quite a quite a decent set of uh, both senior hires and right. mid level hires across right and when you were hiring diversity something that the whole industry is speaking it. about Uh, w- w- was that something that you all kept in mind? Uh, were you looking at not only women but people from outside advertising as well? When yeah, hundred percent. So, uh, in fact, in fact, uh, honestly speaking, I think that's one of one. You know, at the at the group level, I think uh, both globally and for me in India, actually, it's the biggest challenge that I took on when I came on board. Uh, I'm not getting into definite percentages and all, but it wasn't very encouraging. when i right. looked at the overall ratio between the women and the men ratio to begin with as your number for the group and that naturally when uh, you know when uh, last year again 2019 jan is when we started the process but it it you know it's when 20 is when again we see the results of uh, you know a clear you know change of the approach you've seen you're aware that you know we become we got a women who inspire which is one very large uh, you know committee that's formed to in- improve the entire working culture and gender ratio then we became part of the un women entire unstereotype alliance all this is to ensure that we walk the talk and not just uh, you know there is individual target set for the companies and for the group in terms of the ratio to ensure uh, both in my leadership so in fact right. in my mancom leadership of quite a number of people uh, you know there are leaders right at the top all mostly are all women for people who work directly with me so right. that that's a very clear Uh, Havas Media Group, in specifically, uh, the numbers were very different. It's made a dramatic turnaround from the what we had two years back to where we are right. in terms of hiring. Right. So, question number one: conscious decision, target set, uh, absolutely clear that uh, this is a philosophy that you right. can't run away or generally talk about. You have to walk the talk. You have to make the difference, and you have to do what you need to do. Whether you need to change culture, you need to hire, you need to reorganize yourself. So you well. do it because that's i think and it's a it's not like a you know a hard wired rule it's been bought in by everyone because it also fosters a much better culture to work in believe right. it's a much much healthier culture when there is a perfect balance of them. your second question yes i think that's the big one where a lot of work has also happened to get people from outside the industry right. and some of them are actually you know sometimes are straight forward fits and all but a lot of conversations and uh, you know people we've started hiring definitely at very critical profiles 
or yeah. people from outside because you know i'll tell you why it also why it also uh, you know starts fitting and i realized it most of these acquired agencies that have come in come in with expertise which some of them fit in very well with your overall ecosystem some of them are naturally complementary or supplementary you know if i look at think design which is a ux ui yeah in in normal circumstances i i wouldn't know designers who are ux ui as part of my ecosystem so it's a completely new skill set i'm learning the bunch of people you know what the kind of talking look at health avas life sorento if i was part of an ecosystem where there is no health agency i wouldn't know what is a health agency what kind of people where to hire people right. so, you know so the filter that we are hiring so for example we hired a very senior person in havas life sorento mm. uh, you know lady called arunima she actually comes from a very different world she must be ex advertising but for the last so many years she has been out doing something on her own right. you know so uh, example we we set up content design group so yes. the lady we hired comes from the taj group you know yes yeah, ex, so yes yes x advertising but you know what the last 5 years in marketing different yep. world a uh, different uh, thing so i think a lot of these conversations is also happening because of the way we are structuring and building our thing so you know right. both very critical points uh, for our growth and for the culture of this organization right also but are you seeing this trend also emerge where a lot of people are coming back into advertising uh, about maybe say 5 6 years ago we were seeing people get out of advertising into other fields now we are reading of people coming back into advertising is that a yes it is seeing? yes it is i i definitely feel that so it's an ongoing trend and i think it's with this pandemic i think you'll find this becoming quite a strong trend because uh, i think what's happening and uh, you know i hope uh, you know this doesn't sustain for too long i think what's happening is that a lot of cost cutting and a lot of rationalizing yes. of costs is happening outside in many industries and all uh, and you know that's naturally which is allowing a lot of different role profiles getting cut down and getting into bare minimum of people you know so yes. i think what people are seeing is that while there are similar kind of cost cutting in this industry but yes. at, at a certain profile and position you are far more stronger in your core in your core yes. offering or equity versus getting out so we are definitely seeing a role reverse uh, i mean a reversal of many people and all and that's good for us because some of them are quite outstanding bunch of people who probably have left for many reasons and if they come right. back you know we are they are always welcome right okay coming back to the uh, indian operations and opportunities for growth where do you see that so uh, if you see uh, rana just mentioned india is in, as a part of g9 now which is basically the global nine critical countries and yep. we report in directly into the global uh, Management, uh, because we have become important in the overall global pie. Finally, because uh, that's when you become a part of the G9. Uh, as far as the various offices uh, are concerned, Gurgaon is still our largest operation. You know, and in fact, if we were to drill down uh, and do an assessment of only Gurgaon agencies, we'll be clearly the number one. We'll be larger than even the Group M agencies because we have clients like Hyundai, Kia, Domino's. Voltas, Voltas Beko, Oyo, and so many others. You know, okay. the largest client base that we have is in in Gurgaon. And uh, we were doing this kind of an assessment. We realized that we are the largest when it comes to NCR. Right. In spite of a big base, Gurgaon has been growing on a uh, at a very consistent level. And even for twenty twenty one, we are expecting a good growth, given that we have one uh, Dominoes and uh, many other clients uh, in the north. So north is very very critical. now coming to bangalore or rather south as i want to call it it's a market that has been growing very very consistently for us over the last 4 uh, 5 years and right. uh, as you know uh, bangalore is the new age capital you have new age clients over there we also started our journey over there with quicker where we started with them from day one uh, we have swiggy over there which is one of the blue chip uh, ecom clients uh, that we handle now with as i just mentioned uh, the ola uh, acquisition it becomes even more important so i'm really proud to tell you that uh, uh, you know we have uh, six out of the top uh, unicorn clubs today with us so in uh, uh, outside ola oyo uh, uh, info edge quicker tinder and uh, you know uh, swiggy these are the six nice. that we have today and uh, hunger is on for more unicorns so our new business strategy also clearly has a you know as a very clear uh, i would say focus on the unicorn because we see those as as clients which will be investing a lot in future as well right in 2021 uh, 
uh, Mumbai is also a very critical market for us and you'll be seeing a lot of uh, new client win announcements happening uh, very soon and right. uh, we will be uh, we are building that operation in a very big way M- Mumbai is an uh, is 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 uh, is a domain where there are large fmcg companies so we have a very clear uh, uh, focus on acquiring uh, a few of them uh, in the coming year right. uh, we are also going to be uh, activating or rather bolstering our plans for our second agency which is arena so arena which has always been there and we use it for competitive client management right. in 2021 we are clearly focusing on going out in the market as a arena and win businesses. So there's a clear business plan that we have for that. Uh, besides new business wins, uh, we've also focused a lot on insights and I would say thought leadership. And uh, we, we have uh, recently launched something called High Cricket. So High stands for Havas yeah. Insights. So High Cricket, which is a study which, uh, uh, which uh, assesses IPL and actually not just IPL, but it actually looks at how the IPL is is impacting the brand KPIs, you know. So so uh, so this is a very unique study, and we have just launched it. It's going to be there every uh, fifteen days uh, till the time IPL finishes, and right. we'll be coming out with detailed report on it. And we want to take this uh, Havas insight or high property forward to other sports as well. So we are you know planning to do a similar thing in Olympics, hockey, football, nice. even kabaddi. Okay, nice. Yes. And lastly, uh, while uh, currently is not the best time to talk about it, but we are very, very positive that out of home will bounce back in a very big way. Right. Uh, After this uh, pandemic recedes, while there are some people who feel it will not, we are very confident that it will, especially the digital out of home, because people will start going to Cyber Hub and Cyber Hub, all the visibility that you see over there is, is, is ours. When I say ours, it's basically uh, Havas uh, uh, partnered with uh, tribes and we created something called Havas Tribes, which okay. is uh, one of the largest out-of-home offerings today in India. And right. uh, we, we, we manage the entire out-of-home visibility in, in, in that market. So, uh, right. so out-of-home, in my view, is going to be another very key focus uh, as we move forward in 2021, 2022, because uh, right. life is definitely going to change. So these are the domains in which I see growth happening. Rana, um... I, I think just just to quickly add one bit, which naturally where uh, you know one critical uh, reason where the group is naturally laying a lot of focus is also the world of acquisitions. You are aware of yes. all the creative acquisitions which happened over the last two years after I came right. on board. I think uh, you know there are uh, the group continues to heavily depend on India as a very large growing market. Uh, right. You know they are looking at multiple acquisitions across the group and media acquisitions are something that we are working in a very large scale way. They're right. hoping to close one acquisition and announce it this year. Go, uh, oh, nice. why, why I say hoping is because depending on the next few months, the kind of you know back-end work closing yeah. and time and all, it's already got delayed, but you will hear about a large media acquisition under Havas Media Group. And nice. continuously, and continuously, we continue to because there is a you know a global acceleration committee which has been formed for media and you know mergers right. and acquisitions, which uh, you know I represent the India group. And the idea is that look at potential, look at expertise, look at skills which complement the group, which allow us to build scale, stature, and size, which is right. great for us because uh, you know when you when I used to say that in the pre-pandemic time, I used to say that uh, you could look at competition and figure out where the strengths were and where weaknesses are. I think now you are going to look at post-pandemic and say, what is the world going to behave like and where are the changes that's going to happen? What expertise now do I need? Because, you know, even a year and a half back, I think, Ryle, we won't have had this conversation. Maybe my acquisition strategy would have been fundamentally different, but right. about what are the need gaps? What are the strengths does Hawa's group need? I think currently with this entire change that's happening, I think the entire approach will be how has the consumer changed? How has the media landscape changed? What are the changes and where do I get the media expertise that I should now bring them on board? Right. But the good, the good news for us is that the acquisition for the group is going to remain very strongly and India will continue. You've probably seen an article which came out a few months back when Yannick himself announced that India continues to be a yeah. very important market for acquisitions. And right. So that's something that I'm personally driving. Right. Okay. Moving from the opportunities to the challenges, what are the challenges that you foresee 
in the market right now so i I'll, i'll give i think i'll give a more a my perspective and then i'm sure mohit right. can give a more stronger and we keep we keep debating the challenges every day because uh, unfortunately they keep changing you know right uh, so when we ended last the, the, yeah the so when we ended last year december when we ended last year december we thought uh, i'm not saying we ever said the challenges was in control but we thought we knew how to uh, manage uh, the challenge and you know come out into a better 2021 of course things have gone a bit awry again but let me let me not get into that bit uh, where things are getting a bit uh, you know again looking like semi lockdowns and everything starting let me tell you what fundamentally we are seeing as uh, some of the two or three challenges that we continue to face i think you know the big challenge is that advertising is continuing and will remain a discretionary spend so what happens is that the moment it's a discretionary spend and we saw what happened you know when right. we look at any researchers and let's say if you look at the benchmark research of ernst and young kind of a research that you know when the gdp grows you we all know that the many sector grows by a 1 1.5 index or a x you know we keep saying that which is great right which is fantastic and then we benchmark our numbers then we ballpark our figures then we ballpark the growth and everything but what happens when the gdp degrows it it doesn't resonate the same it just degrows at a much higher number and the benchmark becomes suddenly higher than 3x now that is a bit scary because it's a challenge and it will continue to you know completely impend any ambition or growth for all the media and advertising stroke entertainment sector because if the gdp degrows and the industry that gets most impacted is going to be something closer like advertising and media we are going to naturally will have to be very careful about that right. i think yeah. that's one i think second one which i will i will i'll give you which is again coming really top of mind is this entire work from home model there is naturally a completely new model of flexibility of working yeah. from home working from office which also means that i think a new challenge that you will emerge is because is the entire world of discretionary spends costs profitability margins expectations because we've realized over the last year and a half that you could run or sustain a business model by cutting down a lot of spends and costs uh, you know for the group yeah. now if i if i just look at havas media group and the way we run it you know for the last year we've been extremely uh, tough on a lot of you know conversations in terms of what we can cut down what do we do how do we manage and all so i think that will remain a very big challenge for us because and i and i talk this more from industry perspective because this is something which you are not going to allow that cost to come back or expenses to suddenly mount or things to suddenly go back because things are back you know it is going to remain a challenge because it's a it's many years habit you'll have to kind of change it wasn't just a one year change we have to really give up you know and these are some of them are fundamentals like you know just let's say simple travel simple uh, you know how many zoom calls versus how many travel will you do so i'm saying that's a challenge right? because it's yeah. going to going to be a dna change so that's one i think that's going to be a, again a tough one and i think the good point in all this is that india will continue to be a land of opportunities i think uh, come what may no challenge no issue no problem india will continue to bounce back india will have a very strong economy no matter what right. because of that you know we know that the mne industry will grow we know that you know while there are certain percentage which some of the larger networks have put out across i know a lot of industry bodies have given percentages uh, i would i would not comment on those in, uh, percentages yet because i think things are changing every month so i would still say but the industry will grow which means that for agency and networks like us have us it's a land of opportunities out there for the ecosystem we belong which is vivendi it yeah. completely opens up a canvas of content marketplace you know gaming performance digital outdoor so i think that you know this going forward the challenge of how do you look at this entire conversation i think has started and we were discussing uh, mohit and i were discussing the me- media bundling as a challenge you know you are going to probably see that come back uh, from many such forums because uh, you know that is the most cost effective model i think is going to come back so I, we, we are going to see changes we are going to see positive changes but i think a lot of us need to be far more accommodating and flexible about our approach right. understand that this is for the best of the industry and not necessarily challenge everything so that's from me and uh, i'm sure mohit would uh, you like to add some of the more hardwired challenges that you keep facing 
so i'll also add to the opportunities only rana yes the challenges are there uh, you know but uh, since we've had a very strong momentum and i'm talking about havas media specifically right. we had a we have a very strong momentum with the kind of wins that we've had whether it is dominoes where it is uh, ola now and hum there so many of them coming uh, you know in a very short period of time right a very strong momentum yes right now there are some challenges given uh, that you know india is in a state of semi lockdown yeah. i personally feel we still have 9 months to go or, or at least about 8 months to go 8 to 7 months to go uh, another 2 months down the line i personally feel the h2 is going to be uh, is uh, is going to be much more stronger we have a lot of cricketing opportunities as well as other opportunities in the second half i personally feel that uh, even the uh, even the uh, you know the festive season by that time things will become much better and you will see a lot of media action happening i am very positive and i am very optimistic that you know in spite of this 2 uh, 3 months of uh, i would say a little bit of a derailment and that's a universal derailment that's happening we okay. as havas media will definitely get back and continue with the strong momentum that we have and ensure that we end up the year uh, with many more wins and and a very strong uh, 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 very strong numbers super okay thanks a lot for your time uh, mohit and rana i think that's uh, uh, what i had for you guys